Hey, it's some old guy coding again today. And a while back I was uh, looking for some materials to cut with a laser, looking for something thinner. Uh, so I stumbled across this, uh, it's called backer board. Uh, it's used in uh, framing. I think you stick it behind pictures and stuff like that or artwork. Um, it comes in uh, you know, 8 by 10 inch size and it's 1.5 millimeter thick. Um, so it's kind of like a thick cardboard. And, uh, the stuff I got is white on both sides with uh, dark brown in the middle. And so that's what we're going to be cutting today with the 3 watt laser. So let's go ahead and get started. But how do we know how much it takes to cut through a piece. So we have this uh, setup here in ESTL Cam. I've, I've drawn this out and loaded it up in ESTL Cam to test the number of uh, passes it takes to get through versus the speed in millimeters per second. I want to just uh, go over the setup that I have again. Uh, we have uh, laser speed settings of 1, uh, 2, 5, 10, 20, and 30 millimeters per second. Remember that in ESTL cam we can't adjust the power of the laser. That's set up here under setup under texts and uh, it's set to 100% power. Uh, why would we want to use anything else, right? We'd want to go faster. So um, instead of lowering the power, we'll just go faster. So here I've got this grid set up here. I was originally going to write a program uh, to do this, but it seems like this is uh, very easy to set up in uh, ESTL Camp anyway. So we have a column of number of passes, 1, 2, 5, 10, 20, and 30, uh, and uh, millimeters per second in speed. So uh, 1 millimeter per second, 2, 5, 10, 20, and 30. So uh, each of these circles is set up uh, according to the speed and the number of passes here. So if we go ahead and save this CNC code, you'll be able to see um, more of what I'm talking about here. Yeah, we'll go 0.1. So <clears throat> all of these are set to 0.1 millimeter uh, Z-step. We need to tell ESTL cam uh, how deep to cut these things in order to get multiple passes so you will need to disconnect your z-axis in order for this to work and that's what I've done so that way it isn't moving the z-axis around but you can see uh, ESTL cam is thinking that it's uh, cutting these guys once and all the way down to uh, cutting 30 times down here so if we go back to the settings here you can see that uh, this guy was set to a three millimeter cut depth that's why he's generating 30 passes whereas this was uh, just set to a, a 0.1 millimeter cut depth which is uh, the depth of a, a single cut here so um, that's why we get one pass out of that and of course this is uh, this one's uh, three millimeters two out here what we would expect to find is at some point here there's going to be a sort of a diagonal line somewhere going across here where um, the slowness of the feed rate cuts through with fewer numbers of passes but um, the faster speed rate cuts through with more passes so I'm expecting to see a, a diagonal line somewhere going across the page. So let's go ahead and run this and see what results we get for uh, this uh, backing board. So apparently my video cut out uh, midstream here, but let's take a look at this again. <coughs> so I don't have a video on top, I'll just show you the video from underneath in a time lapse format because this took a, a bit to run. Um, what we have here is the number of passes going increasing this way, so it's one pass, two, five, ten, twenty, thirty passes. And here we have decreasing uh, feed rates. A feed rate of 30 millimeters per second, 20, 10, 5, 2, and 1. So some of these guys are still kind of stuck in there, but if you touched them, they fell out. So what we're looking at here is kind of a, a line that goes this way, where um, it's kind of a sweet spot between um, uh, feed rate or passes. Now if you take a close look here, it's almost like there's more burning the slower the feed rate goes. I guess that could be understandable. And, uh, but it's not as significant at the faster feed rate with more passes where we still get a hole. 
So it's almost like this is a better hole than than going over to this end. So more passes at uh, more passes at a higher speed rate seem to be better on this material than uh, a higher, slower speed rate and fewer passes in the quality of the cut. I don't know what happened to this guy out here. I must have coded him wrong. That seems like that's an, a real outlier. Although it's almost made it through here, I just I don't know what the deal is. Um, <clears throat> we will take a look at that. So I guess if we were going to cut something uh, down in this area would be the parameters we'd want to pick, I think. So let's try something. So I went ahead and downloaded the uh, laser box extension to uh, Inkscape here and I uh, came up with a kind of a box that I'll give a try to cut here. Uh, it's kind of hard to see because it's uh, really, really fine. And <laughs> Uh, there must be a setting to enlarge these uh, icons because I cannot see those, but we'll work on that later. So I exported this as SVG. Yes, I know you can generate the G code here in, in this program, but uh, uh, I just want to flip back to something I know quickly and can see. So, <clears throat> so here I've imported the SVG into uh, ESTL Cam, and we know that uh, cutting faster with more passes is uh, uh, best for that material that we're going to be using here. <coughs> So we're going to pick that guy, and then we're going to go up here to Automatic Functions, and we're going to say Engrave and Engrave, and there it goes. Boom, it's done. And then we will select all of that. <coughs> and uh, I think we decided that uh, 30 passes at 30 millimeters per second is, uh, is good. So at 0 0.1 millimeter depth per pass, um, one millimeter would be 10, so three millimeters would be 30 passes, so there we are. So let's go ahead and generate CNC code for that now. And uh, let's just go right out here to the, oh, I don't have my flash drive in there, so let's just go right there and save it. We're good. Yes. I'd like to replace it please. So now we'll take a look at this and it's making lots of passes so that should be good. Hopefully these parts won't fall out. Hopefully there'll be enough pins underneath there. You know if I was uh, patient uh, I would make sure that there were enough pins located under these parts to uh, to uh, hold them up but uh, you know we'll just give it a try and see what happens. How about that? Looks like the parts held in there very nicely without falling out. A little darkness over here, a little burning, but let's look at the back side. Oh, that looks pretty cool. This is the one I initially cut that uh, <laughs> was off, so we just flipped it over. It looks like I did okay there. So, this is the back side, that's the front side. So it looks like it made it all the way through. Let's see if we can just push these guys out now. Let me move this over and turn some of the blowers off. There. Make sure we're zoomed out all the way. So let's just gently pop this guy apart. There, look at that. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. There's that one. That one comes out. Still enough paper holding her on there, which is kind of nice in this case because we don't want it to fall down and, and get damaged by the laser. Alrighty. So there's what's left. This is the initial attempt that was wrong on that side there, but 
uh, here's what's left there. So we're just going to take these guys. You can see the cuts in there. There's the front side, and there's the back side. We're just going to pop it just like that. Very nice. So that was 30 millimeters uh, per second feed rate with uh, 30 passes. And uh, unfortunately I turned it off. I didn't catch how long it took. It didn't seem like it took too long. We'll be able to tell from the video. So let's move these guys aside here for a second. And let's see what we got. Get that frame out of the way. So there's all our parts. You can see the edges, uh, I don't know if you can or not, you try here. The edges look nice. I think I measured this, it was a uh, 1.5 uh, millimeter uh, thick material. There we go. Look at that. It's all together. That fit up very nicely. Now, now if we could do that with a little bit thicker wood, that'd be cool. We'll give that a try. I'm off to Menards this morning once uh, the mother-in-law coverage comes in. And I'm going to buy some uh, different layers of uh, Baltic birch, uh, um, some pieces there, some hobby wood, and we'll give that a try. And then, uh, you know, we could build something like this, cut it out, uh, take it out with a bandsaw or something, or, or just program it in where we're going to split it, and then, uh, you know, put some inches on it and make a box. That's pretty cool. Look at that. Not too shabby. I see Inkscape also has a uh, jigsaw puzzle uh, uh, program out there. We might have to try that one, too. Cool. Thanks for watching.